Hi, it's Dr. Khaled from London. Today's our second episode of the Dr. Stone Reactions. We're going to be looking at the science, the medicine, the technology. We're going to see if it's accurate, if it's realistic. So let's dive straight in. Yep, nitric acid, and this part is actually true. When you've got lots of bat feces, so bat poo basically, you can get a buildup of lots of acids. You've got nitric acid, you've got phosphoric acid, and actually these acids are known to corrode or break down some stone. So if you get some weird shapes in the cave, that could be down to bat poo. I'm not sure how it's dripping down from the ceilings. Normally it tends to be on the ground or places where the bat poo has accumulated, but it is feasible. You know, it can break down rock and that could explain how Senku was depetrified. So he was able to come back with all the rock around him breaking up. So the science in this one holds up quite well, actually. <laughs> He's gonna put nitric acid on his fingers. No. Don't do that. There we go. So that is how he was able to get depetrified. Nitric acid can break down some or erode some stone, and he was able to break free from there. Now, importantly, he was getting nitric acid all over his fingers. It can be corrosive. It will do damage to you. It will cause pain or probably burn you. So don't do that. Not not a good idea. Don't go touching back poo. It's not a good idea. And it can burn you. So don't go touching poo. as she says, don't go touching poo. I think that's a good summary for life. I mean, life lessons. Don't go touching poo. Simply done. Um, yeah. There we go, we've got some numbers. Fairly accurate, that one. So the brain is using about 350 to 400 calories a day, which is quite a lot. It's about 20% of our body's calorie intake, and the brain is only about 2%, 2 to 3% of our body weight. So massive amount of energy use because it's a super, super vital organ. If you think about it, the brain is doing lots of things in the background. Back in the day, people used to say, you only use 10% of your brain. Don't ask me where that voice came from, but it's not true. You're using your brain constantly. It's like a supercomputer, so it's got loads of... Have you ever pressed like Control Alt Delete and you've got Task Manager up and you just see all of the processes that are going on? your brain is basically doing that. It's just like calculating tons of things in the background and it is constantly in use, which is why it's using so many calories per day. Now, the important thing to say about the brain is that it's made out of billions of cells. So that's lots and lots of cells. And between the cells, the cells are called neurons, and between the cells are something called synapses. These are connecting all the cells and communicating and there are trillions of synapses. And the really super cool thing about the brain is that you're constantly making new connections. So if you're learning new things, picking up new hobbies, your brain is making new synapses. So continue to do that. You're remolding, reshaping your own brain. How cool is that? Right, let's jump back in. <laughs> what is he doing? Yeah, could damage a cervical nerve. <laughs> so I guess this, in a light-hearted way, just emphasizes the importance that even if somebody miraculously recovers from something, the first thing you should do is not go and give them a big bear hug. That's likely to make things worse if they have an injury, especially if it's a neck injury. You don't want to be moving their neck around. So important, even like when you're walking in the street, if you find somebody who's been in a car accident, what we say is make sure the area is safe, make sure they're safe, 
Make sure you don't move them about until medical teams get in and they can stabilize the neck so there's no fractures. Uh, so you don't want to be doing more damage already. Important lesson to learn. ああ、that actually reminds me, I love the comparisons and the philosophy in this. You've got Senku who is pro-science and pro-technology, pro-information, and you've got his nemesis that's a military-driven kind of side and really kind of anti-science. There's a game that I play called Civilization, and the newest one is Civ 6. I don't, don't really like that one too much. I play Civ 5 and have played it for many, many years. It's a super cool game. You basically start off as a human tribe in the middle of nowhere at the beginning of time and you have to rediscover same, same as senku kind of um some of humanity's greatest discoveries so you're going through things like horseback riding to then getting to more advanced things like archery and then warfare and then the atom bomb but what's so so interesting is that there are different routes to victory even in that game and it's very similar to here you could go down the scientific route and you can start to go uh, into space exploration and have a scientific victory that way. Or you can go down the military route, which Senku's nemesis is doing, which is to have a super mighty military and defeat your opponents before they get to the scientific part. So it's going to be super interesting to see what happens next. Weirdly enough, I'd always get beaten. I'd always go down the scientific route, but I'd always get beaten by a military civilization. And often it would be Gandhi of all people. Like Gandhi would like turn up at my civilization's doorstep near the end of the game and be like, right, I'm going to nuke you. And I'd be like, yo, Gandhi, well, why you got to do that, man? It's just not cool. And yeah. Just don't understand why I had to be Gandhi. Somebody's going to do it. So yeah, Gandhi always wins. Aoi, man. This should be interesting. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So we're in a completely like non-scientific world. She's got high heels. How, how have they discovered high heels before discovering like pottery and anything else for that matter? Yeah, she's got high heels, so priorities, people. That doesn't sound good. Not good at all. So, when somebody's under a tree, certainly a tree that's that size, I would be worried about something called a crush injury. This is often when people are involved in a car accident or if something large falls on top of them or if there's trauma to the abdomen or the chest area. Basically, the, the worry is that there is internal bleeding, even if it doesn't seem like they are, you know, if they've got broken bones or bleeding on the outside. Sometimes, like in this case, they could be perfectly conscious and talking away to you, seeming absolutely fine, but hours later they could basically get really, really unwell and pass away. What would happen is that when they go to hospital, they would have a full workup done that involves doing blood pressure, heart rate, and vital signs. But as well as that, we would also do their blood tests. The blood test would show us if their blood count has dropped suddenly. That would bring suspicions for me that there's internal bleeding going on. And further to that, you could add in a scan like a CT scan, which would help you identify any areas that were bleeding. When you have such a crushing force hit the abdomen, the worry is that some of the internal organs like your liver, your kidneys, or your spleen, particularly your spleen, that's the one that's most likely to get damaged, can suddenly bleed out. And that bleeding can be life-threatening if it's not stopped. So often with these kind of injuries, really important that we monitor patients. And often some of the signs could be things like if they're becoming more drowsy, 
they're getting more pain in the abdomen, or if they're peeing blood, that could indicate damage to the kidneys. So crush injuries, not always as simple as, I'm fine, I'm gonna walk it off. You have to monitor them afterwards and make sure that there aren't any signs of internal bleeding, which can be invisible to us because the person seems absolutely fine. Cool, that brings us to the end of today's episode. We've looked at nitric acid, we've looked at the brain, we've looked at crush injuries and civilization. Great game, by the way, check it out. No, that's not an advert, that's just me telling you that's a pretty sick game. If you wanna see some more reaction videos, they'll probably be up here. If you wanna hit some buttons, don't have to smash them, you can just gently poke them. Um, feel free, they're, they're probably somewhere around here. I've been Dr. Khaled, you've been bloody awesome. Catch you on the next one.